battery's dying. It's so faint on this. So bad. The uh, hey Roger Pepper. Yes, I'll talk about my day off here in a minute. Um, my I, I'm just doing the YouTube. I'm not using the OBS again today because I did the the speed test and it said 2.4 uh, megabytes per second, which is just way on the low side. So I'm hope it may be. It may even affect this, which is probably the most direct route, hopefully. I did log on to uh, Discord yesterday for a little bit. I'm sure you saw that, and liking comments and all that. see so we have um so you got your so bonnie got her guitar but on tuesday not on monday so that was not correct if i'm not mistaken she got it yesterday and she got the right guitar but it came in a tailor bag <laughs> which is just so weird um hey miguel Dennis. sent me uh the video for the yamaha uh the uh paul david's paul david's videos look so good i mean they just i really wish I, I could make my videos look that good i'd have to buy a much better camera i mean he's making videos he doesn't do live stuff i maybe he probably has some live streams because of the the lockdown but um and i think is he in copenhagen is he danish or is he in holland the paul david's guy but he was talking about that uh, Yamaha guitar and like, is it the future of guitars? And I'm just like, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, trust me, I remember back. Um, yeah, I'll talk about my day off here in a minute. Um, I remember um, uh, when they, when, uh, who was it that came out with guitars? Well, Gibson did it for a minute. Uh, in fact, I even remember I worked at a, a guitar store, kind of a, a consigned guitar store space at a Sears in Indianapolis. Um, it was um, the Sears in Castleton, Indianapolis, and um, the mall. And there was, a, I think it was Rocky's Music, which I never, ever went to. But they basically rented out this little cubicle um, that, you know, I could, it was probably maybe twice the size of my office. And uh, it was right behind the records and the stereos and the washers and dryers, you know, the appliances at Sears. And uh, uh, the uh, uh, 
the the uh, so I would I remember when Gibson came out with uh, what was that model? It was like this weird shaped, and it had effects in it, and it was like, oh, this is the future of guitars, and of course the guitar solo because. You know, people like buying effects. They like, you know, and, and um, it's like anything you put in a guitar is not going to be the best sound in anything. I mean, it's, you know, the, you put a, a preamp inside a guitar and there's still going to be better sounding preamps. That you, they're not going to put a thousand dollar or fifteen hundred dollar preamp inside of any guitar. Um, and if they did, if they put like a Neve preamp inside a guitar, it would weigh, it would weigh a ton and it would cut back on the vibration. So you couldn't do it anyway. Um, so when I saw the guitar, there was a good, somebody sent me this review of a, a Yamaha guitar with built-in effects. And, he, you know, you could adjust the chorus and the re I'm sorry, but I, I'm, I'm not a fan of any effects on acoustic guitar. Um, and I've talked about this before, but um, I was playing years ago, um, back when Alex and Jack were just little boys, I was playing with uh, a singer named Fernando Ortega. He was leading worship. Um, he's a great singer. He still travels and tours and does records and everything. And we were leading worship at, at Chuck Swindoll's church, of all places, in Fullerton, California. And Chuck Swindoll's the nicest guy. We had so much fun. He was a lot of fun. And... Um, uh, he would always hang out with us. And I'm touching my face, which is one of the rules. It's a punitive sip. Everybody takes a sip. We have a drinking game here, if you're new. Although I only see 20 people on, so I, I'm, I'm assuming um, two sips to put those Bonnie's guitar. Okay. I'll drink one sip. I'm running low on coffee. I got to save my sips. Um, but I... Uh, I had a Gibson, I had my Gibson Dove, which had a pickup in it, but it, it never worked right. Um, it would, it was like the pickup, you know, they would have adjusted it and then it would sound, you know, I'd play the strings and be like, or it would be like one or two of the top, either the high E string or the B string or both wouldn't ring out because the, the saddle wasn't making good contact with the piezo pickup or piezo or piezo, or however it's said. <laughs> I've heard knowledgeable people say both ways. So, um, and so I, I didn't, I didn't use the pickup because I didn't want to lose my top two strings while I was playing acoustic guitar for worship. And I also wanted to play mandolin, and my mandolin didn't have a pickup in it. So, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> I brought a. Um, uh, my, I had a, a really nice microphone that my band, I had bought for my band to use to record vocals and everything. It was an AKG 414. Very good microphone. Very good all-purpose microphone. Large diaphragm microphone. Pretty good for vocals. Very bright microphone. But really, really good for guitar. And since it was just me on guitar and Fernando on piano, and then there would be a cellist on the other side, um, I could have a large, frying, uh, large uh, uh, diaphragm microphone. Mm -hmm on stage with me. And if I had a drummer behind me, it really wouldn't work because it would pick up more drums than guitar, or it would just create so much of an echoey reverb sound for the sound man. He would just be frustrated. But because it was just a small, you know, acoustic trio, um, I set the microphone up and um, I would play all the, you know, play all the songs, you know, and uh, um, I would get, and it, it just, it sounded great. And we, we had wedges, so you have to be a little bit careful. Like I couldn't have too much guitar in the wedge or it would feed back because the microphone is literally right above the wedge. Um, but it wasn't a problem because, there, again, there was no drums. It was just Fernando singing, beautiful cellist on the other side, sometimes a female singer, sometimes a bass player. In fact, John Patitucci, I don't know if you know who that, that is. I did a gig with him last year, but he, he totally remembered doing these, but he played, gosh, he did. He must have done like a couple months of those, of, of those weekends. So, so I got to play with John Petitucci, which is pretty cool. Um, but I got so many people coming up to me saying, man, what kind of pickup is in that guitar? I'm sitting there with a microphone right in front of me. Like, I mean, what kind of pickups in that guitar? I've never heard an acoustic guitar sound that good. when that went Cause it's not a pickup. I'm, you know, I, I always say there's three types of guitars. There's electric guitar, there's acoustic guitar, and then there's the piezo acoustic. And so 
the problem with a piezoacoustic is it 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 already trends towards the electric sound. Like you know, you got your electric guitar sound here, you got your acoustic guitar sound here. Here's the piezo, and if you add chorus to it, you're shoving it over to the electric sound. If you add compression, it's going to sound more like an electric guitar. If you if you add uh, reverb, again, less and less it's going to sound like. Now, don't get me wrong. When I'm recording acoustic in my studio and I got my ears in, um, for me, I put in reverb. I'll put compression. I'll EQ it. Um, and then to the producers and to the composers, I'll send a wet version and a dry version, meaning I will send a version with the reverb and all that stuff in it. And uh, and I will send a version that bypasses all those effects. And that way they can do because a lot of times, like my idea of good compression is not, you know, I've, I've got some plugins, you know, and I've got some presets and everything. But guys that mix movies or games or or TV shows or records they're going to have much better plugins than I'm going to have. So my compression is going to sound like garbage compared to for them. They're going to go, what kind of, Oh man, why did they use that plugin? You know, whatever. So that's why I always send a dry version to the engineers uh, to be mixed. So that's just a, that's a pretty standard practice. A lot of times they'll say, send us the DI, which that doesn't usually work with the uh, with electric. Um, when they say, send me the DI, because that means it's preamp. Um, and but sometimes they want to reamp it. They want to run it through their own amp effects. So some people say that. But most of the time, if I'm doing electric guitar on something, they want all my sounds. Uh, that, so that's different. But on acoustic guitars, I definitely do a wet and a dry. Uh, we have a big congratulations. You can take two sips on uh, Bonnie's guitar, new guitar, or new Yamaha game. Uh, I saw pictures of it yesterday. Uh, I don't know if you saw me on. Uh, I was on Discord yesterday, just kind of thumbs upping and hearting comments. People missed me. I love that. Um, let's see, how many people do we have online? I'm going I'm, I'm to create the, a link. So you have not, uh, how many people do we have on? Well, if we, we got 34 people. So there's a chance that there's somebody new here. So if you want to go on and continue talking about guitar stuff and, and you know, being helpful and supportive to people, that's primarily, that's, yeah, Pat is a great bass player. Uh, super nice guy too. In fact, <laughs> Alex, my son, is writing music with his daughter. She lives in Hollywood. And, and so the two of them got together and wrote a song. Um, and, uh, you know, she's like, she wants to be a pop artist. I forget what she goes by. Um, Grace something, Gracie, or uh, it's, you, it doesn't, her last, she doesn't go by Patatucci. You have to, figure, you have to figure that out, but you can follow her on Instagram. In fact, I think on Instagram, they, they posted some of the song. I'm so glad buying. Yeah, and it, it, it's always it's, it's a little nerve wracking to buy an acoustic guitar online. Uh, but in this era right now, where you can't go into stores, um, and you know, guitar stores are probably the worst place. Probably, you know, if you're going to open the economy, the last thing that should open is probably guitar stores. Sadly, because I was thinking about the Nam show. Uh, how many how many guitars did I pick up at the Nam show? How many bass? Or, I didn't pick up any basses, but I, I picked up a lot of guitars at the NAMM show. And how many people pick those guitars up right before? And they don't clean them. You know, now if there's a NAMM show next year, um, I don't know if David's here. I told David I'd get him a badge if he wants to come out. But um, if there is a NAMM show, uh, thanks, Bruce. Um, uh, oh, hey, Bradley. I'll, I'll, I'll answer that in a second. Um, but uh, if there's an amp show next year, I'm sure I may not be able to get in because I always just get in like, uh, you know, I, I guess I get an artist badge or something like that. But really, the NAM show is for manufacturers to meet with buyers. Uh, and so they could very well limit it. You know, and I, when I get an artist badge, it's not because I'm demoing. Um, I've never done that. My son does that, but I've never done the demo thing. Uh, the name show. I've never been asked, or maybe a couple times I've been asked, but generally I, I just don't want to sit in one booth for four days. It just sounds like no fun. <laughs> My son, Alex, if you're on, if you're watching, you can chime in. But <laughs> you don't really look forward to it. I know that, and so uh, I feel bad because it's like 
you know, I took Alex and Jack even to the NAMM show for years. And uh, as kids, you know, Alex started going when he was seven years old. And um, and it was always a lot of fun. Now that he's working it, it's no more, it's not fun anymore. Because he has it there and, you know, in fact, the booth where he's at, the last two years, they had the, this bass booth where people just play way too loud. And the thing about bass is when you're right on the bass amp, you can't really hear it. Bass, the lower the sound waves, the longer the sound waves, the louder it is further away. That's why you can hear a car, you know, thumping out bass coming around down the street pretty far away because those those low frequencies travel so far. And the and so he's like, if you stand in his booth, it's a lot louder. The bass is a lot louder in his booth than it is in the bass booth. And so he's got to sit there for four days. Well, three days. They don't make him do Sunday. He's got to sit there for four days demoing all the, you know, the products and stuff. And it's just it's oh, it's just it's robbed all the joy out of the NAMM show for poor Alex. God bless the kid. But uh, uh, he does social media for uh, Voodoo Lab. So he does the Instagram and the Twitter and the Facebook. And he's even starting to do some videos now where he's interviewing people. Um, um, so uh, Bradley asked, and, and one of the rules, if I switch guitars, we all take a drink. We take a sip. Uh, not a, not a whole not a whole shot, just a sip. Man, imagine if you took a shot of espresso every time he, we had one of my uh, my rules violations. <laughs> you guys would be bouncing off the walls. You have our tech. So Bradley's asking, when do I pull up the twelve string? That's a good question. Usually, I'd say probably seventy five percent of the time when I pull up the twelve string is when. Somebody's asked me to pull up the 12 string. Can you put 12 string on this? In fact, I just worked on a new TV show uh, that's in very early stages. Um, and we were trying to find, me and the, the composer, I was you know, helping him try to find the right instrument combinations for the melody on the theme, which would be great to be on the theme because then that's for, you know, as long as the show's on the air, um, there's residual income from that. Not as a writer, but as a musician. A union musician on it so um so he asked me to pull out the 12 string and that's kind of why i have it out right now is because i was doing multiple different versions of it with different picks and all sorts of different sounds trying to get different sounds out of it you know one of the things was the melody was kind of up here right uh but those are all unison strings so it was more it was like, something like that right so I actually had to I had to play it on up here. Because I wanted all um all the notes to have an octave to be an, have octaves. Whereas if I play it here, it's just unison, there's no octaves. Okay. Okay, so that's not really answering your question at all, Bradley. Just I'm admitting that right now. Um uh, so what I would um yeah, if you <laughs> read is right, if you're gonna do uh, John Denver song, you know, for covers, there's like, you know, um, if you want to kind of, if you're being asked to get that sound, I like to use, uh, I like to use, um, 12 string when we talked about this, we did this ooh, three, four days ago. Oh, and I'm going to talk about my day off too. <laughs> so in a second here, um, we talked about the, the free range groove. So, a lot of times if I'm going to do something that's supposed to sound like the Wild West, you know, like. Uh, if I want to get that kind of really, and I know it's distorted, I wish I could have used. Um, yeah, that's what I'm answering, Bruce. Um and uh, <laughs> the day off story. I don't think Diane's going to like the stay off story. <laughs> yeah. um, but the uh, uh, I, I'm having to use the YouTube software because I'm, I'm just going straight into YouTube and not using um, OBS again because my my uh, uh, the um, and I didn't even turn it on to check, but my up, upload speeds are like 2.4 or not even. It was 2.1 when I first checked. Um, so, um, oh, okay. Sorry, broken thumbs. I'll see you later. We're conference. Okay. Well, you'll be back. Um, 
so uh, if I want to kind of get that, you know, that that wide open sound, you know, if I so really, I don't know if I would say there, there's a style of music I would use 12 string for what I would say there's an emotion that I would use 12 string for 12 string just really has this like just. I don't know, just this freedom, this openness, this like you're outdoors, you're riding horses, that kind of thing. And then the other thing I would use 12 for, I really. Now I might use it for open detuning. I'm going to drop detuning now. get a tuner out but I mean uh, that would be very very um, uh, John Bon Jovi sounding Bon Jovi sounding to have a 12 string and drop D you know? and I don't know any Bon Jovi tunes but for some reason that's what comes to mind you can probably tell me When I've got it tuned to drop D is to do some slide, you know. And I've done a lot of that for TV. So a lot of TV stuff, again, it's kind of like that would be more of like dusty road kind of sound. Uh, so I'm, you know, 12 string, um, uh, 12 string is uh, use it more for TV or, and stuff than for pop or radio records or anything like that for writing songs. I use it, like I said, I use it primarily for to create a mood. So hopefully that kind of answers your question if you're even still online. Uh, Bradley, right? I think it was Bradley. You, you may be new, so welcome. I haven't seen Bradley. Oh, okay, Bradley. You did say thank you, so um, let's see. And they look out for you. Do you see Bruce? Everybody, oh, Dennis, what's, uh, Dennis, let's see. Do you play the 12 string the same way as your 12 six string? Uh, I can use the string set. Oh, no, I never use the string separately. No, no, I don't do that. Uh, I always, so when you're picking, you have to pick two strings at once. <laughs> But they're close together. Um, the interesting thing is the the twelve string. Uh, the way this is strung is skinny string then fat string, skinny string then fat string. So it, it it's easier to pick down than up. Um, and uh, but so if you. Sound quite the same picking up. Now, what's weird is my Rickenbacker 12 string, the one that the beat, you know, the Beatles played Ricky 12 strings. I have one of those, and the strings are the opposite. They put the, the fat string first, then the skinny string. And that's how they've always strung those. So that's how I string that, even though I prefer to have it the other way. I think if I ever got another electric 12 string, like if I got a Fender 12 or something like that, which I can't even, I hardly ever pull out the Ricky. I don't know why I would get one. Um, uh, the um, uh, I think I would, um, uh, I would probably um, uh, tune it the other way, you know, with the low, the fatter string down down low. So uh, one thing too, I know Pat Metheny did something where it was like, um, I did do this thing. Uh, let's see. Like I've got it tuned to a major third, so that's G and B flat, or minor third, sorry. Uh, and I did do some experiment. I did experiment a little bit with a 12 string where I had 
one of the strings tuned to major third and one string tuned to minor third, try to play harmonized solos, but it was so much work. I was like, hey, this is not feasible. So yeah, they do make a 12 string strat. Yeah, kind of. I don't know that it's, but they, it's it's got a weird, funny headstock. It kind of like droops. Um, uh, so I'm sure someone will post a picture of one. Uh, I forget what they call it. It's not called a strat, but it's basically, um, in fact, it may even be, um, I think it has its own name. It may be called a Fender 12 now that I think about it. Um, let me look and see. This is like watching an episode of CSI. Uh, boom, boom. Yeah, let's see. Fender. Oh, um, uh, the best way place to find it is always reverb. Here's reverb. Uh, and what do they call it? Traditional Stratocaster. Uh, yeah, because the bridge would be a mess, I think. Okay. Yeah, a, a Stratocaster. Oh, it's called a Stratocaster 12. Wow. Well, here's one for 900 bucks. It's really cool looking, but man, that bridge has got to be, how do they do that? <laughs> I'm just thinking. And it doesn't look, well, in the headstock, they changed it. It's more just like a, uh, I won't say what it looks like. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it just, it's not a, it's not a family. <laughs> it's not appropriate. <laughs> um, let's see if we get a little more light. All right. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, reverb is great for that. You can just at least see stuff and see what something's worth or what something you know might cost. Wanted dead or alive. Yep, that's yeah, that's the song, Peter. Um, I get worried about amplifying a twelve string. Yeah, it's not. I mean, one thing I one thing I do one I think I realized was when I when I played my Ricky to get the sound that everybody was getting back in the sixties. I discovered you you really got to compress the crud out of it. It sounds really good. The Ricky 12 string in particular. And I don't know if it's because of the pickups or just because it's 12 string. Because it's got the it's got the unique pickups too um, that I don't have on any other guitar. Yeah, right. And the bridge was designed by a mechanical engineer. Yeah, not a civic civil engineer. <laughs> Bruce. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the civil engineer designed the road to get to the Fender factory that people get lost on. So I'm just kidding. Um, so yeah, in fact, uh, Jack texted me, are you talking about me on the live stream? I'm like, oh no, what did I say? Did he get in trouble? Uh, it's funny. He's like a veto reached out to him. So <laughs> and if veto is not what, no, I don't see a veto on today, but <laughs> Just no, no, Avito. He he may get back to you. I don't know. I text him, and I don't, <laughs> I don't hear from him. So, uh, you know, it's like his. He won't reply to his own dad. I don't know how much he'll reply to someone he doesn't know. Um, so, uh, but uh, um, they uh, uh, anyway. So I told him I wouldn't say too much. He was just worried I was giving away like trade secrets, and I told him what I said because I was like, shoot. Was I? Was I saying something? And uh, he said, no, none of that stuff's like protected information. So he was more worried about me talking about inside stuff that I, I don't really know any of that stuff. So <laughs> so that's good. All right. So um, so the strumming thing. Oh, so I got we got enough people here. But, you know, we talk, let's, I wish I had the OBS software so I, we could do some strumming. You know, I could show you some strumming patterns and things like that. Um, but I have the one that I really like. I call it the hip hop pattern and it was kind of, I kind of came up with it in the 90s it was very I mean it wasn't like I didn't come up with it I was imitating other guitar players um and really more imitating drummers you know um and it, it's this pattern it's um it's like it's like that uh, pattern where it's uh, snares on two and four, but also on the one, two, E, and A uh, of two and the uh, three E, the E of three. So it's kind of like uh, playing the snares on two and four, but then they'll hit a little quieter on the 16th notes on either side of three. Okay. So kind of this pattern, uh, let's see if I can do it. Let's see. Let's see. Um, Let me do it without the 
So this is my kick drum and this is my snare drum. Right? That's weird. I could probably do it with sticks in my hand. Um, I want to grab my 12 string. <laughs> Ricky, I've had it out. Didn't I have it out? Uh, one of these lessons, I thought I had it out. Yeah, you know, uh, Reed, Reed saying just, it would justify another purchase. I, uh, yeah, I bought that, Ricky. I got a pretty good deal on it, but I bought it specifically for a show I was doing. And, um, uh, you, you know, used it, but I probably pull that thing out maybe twice a year, maybe once a year. Uh, again, one of the reasons I love elixirs because I have elixirs on it and I know that they'll be fine, that it, the strings won't be rusty or anything like that. I'll pull it out and I'll be able to use it and put it back in the case and put it back in the closet. So, um, and I got a really good deal from it. I got, I bought it from the, my friend Scott who had that store in Hollywood or was a co-owner of a store in Hollywood then moved to Pasadena and started, um, I think it was co called Guitar Gallery in Pasadena. And then it became, then it was Route 66 Guitars on Altadena Boulevard just north of Colorado. And, um, but when he was in guitar gallery, I think I bought my dove and I bought my, I bought my dove from him at guitar gallery. And I bought, I think the Ricky I bought from him at guitar gallery. And he was a very exclusive, not exclusive, but he was, he got a lot of Rickenbacker stuff. He actually was a kind of a historian for Rickenbacker. So he would actually, um, so you can hear the boom, boom, the kick right there. So we'd play. It's like boom, boom, down, up, up, down. See, boom, down, up, up, down. It's a 16th note pattern. Um, and you'll notice, you can kind of tell because the first two hits, those bottom, and I'm hitting bottom string or two strings. It does, you don't have to be specifically one string. You can hit a couple if you want. Um, it, you just have to be in the bottom range, kind of create this separation between the kick and the snare. Uh, Use that pattern more muted. <laughs> Jim. Peter says, Jim, you are a fortunate man. <laughs> yeah. Hey, my wife bought me my first Telecaster. So, uh, so yeah, you got, yeah, my wife knows, <laughs> she, she knows what pays the bills though. So, um, uh, so it makes it a little easier, uh, to, to justify, but, uh, yeah, 12 strings are amazing. I mean, uh, they're a lot of work. Um, but I would, if, if I would not buy a 12 string online. I would wait until stores are open and go play some. And I would highly recommend a, a, a Taylor 12 string, not because I quote unquote endorse Taylors. I really don't per se. Um, I don't, I'm not on a payroll. They don't give me anything. I, I taught clinics for them back in the nineties. Um, but I, um, uh, I, I know the Taylor kind of brags about starting their guitars with their neck. They want a very playable guitar and then they build a guitar around it. Um, and that may not sound like a brag for some guitar builders. They really may want it to sound good. Taylors sound fine. They're not, they don't, you know, you, they, they have, a, a, they have a wide range of sound opportunity op, uh, options. So uh, yeah, I'm a fortunate man too, <laughs> but you know, I don't know, Bruce, <laughs> you, know, you had a career, you had, you had income. I mean, I, I mean, I think about the years we lived on 10,000 a year, you know, and it wasn't that long ago. I mean, so you, you, you got you got to realize it was a rough path that almost everyone in my shoes. I, I can't think of anyone that was in my boat that stayed with it, that didn't just get a regular job. So I think there were six or seven times where I told Beth, I'm going to quit. I'm not going to do this anymore. And she'd say, and do what? And I'd say, well, I don't know. I work for UPS. And she goes, well, what were you going to do with it? Well, I said, I don't know. I work in a warehouse, you know make 15 an hour. And she goes, well, not to start. And I'm like, yeah. And she goes, well, yeah. And you'll probably have to do the midnight shift. And I'm like, oh yeah. She goes, just get a couple more students. That's, you know, you get two more students and that's almost what you'll make in a day, it, 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 you know, or more. 
uh, at UPS, I'm like, okay, you know, so I'd get a couple more students and then we'd be fine. So, oh, okay. So you want to talk about my day off? Okay. I got good news and I got bad news. <laughs> the good news is I got a lot done. I got a lot done yesterday. The bad news is I got a lot done. I got a lot done yesterday. And it pretty much told me uh, I should really be uh, spending my days, more of my days writing. And uh, because the work I do here in my studio, uh, it's part of the challenge of doing what I do is to, to work when you're not getting paid to work. Uh, most people, most of you, you know, if, if you're not retired, uh, oh, did I touch my face? Okay, sorry. Um, uh, um, most of you, you work and you get a paycheck at the end of the week. I, my wife calls it being career pregnant. I work on stuff and it, the, the money doesn't show up for nine months. Oh, I have Discord open, so I'm going to close it. Um, and Or actually, it's more like it could be 18 months. So, for example, say I write a, a piece of music for a TV show. Uh, that I'm working on. And most of these shows are like reality shows on cable networks, you know, on own or on a and E or discovery, all the, all of them basically have music on over all, all those networks, except uh, like the travel channel. I don't, because they don't pay royalty. So I don't write for, I don't write for anyone that does not going to pay back in. It makes no sense. Cause I don't get paid on the front end. Now, if they want me to write for them to write for uh, HGTV, they'd have to pay me a whole lot of money up front because I won't make any money on the back. And you can have one, I can write one song in a couple hours and I make thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars off of it because they just use it to death. Um, but then I could write a hundred more that I, they never use. And so that's the game you're playing. Um, <clears throat> so I write music and um, and so I write the song that it gets sent in. Uh, my writing partner, he uh, does all the mixes and the stems and all the versions and everything like that and sends it into the company. And then the music sits there and it maybe you know gets into a show and then the sh show just sits there until it airs. And then once it airs, then six to nine months later, I get paid based on errands. And if it, every time it airs and depending on what, uh, if it airs at prime time or if it airs at two in the morning, it get paid less if it airs at two in the morning than if it airs at eight at night. Um, and so I've had music on primetime TV shows and you get one airing and it could pay $2,000 for a minute of air at time. And you're like, wow, that's cool. But then it never airs again. So, <laughs> you know, that's why I don't do network reality because, uh, because they don't, they don't re air the, the, uh, the bachelor, but a lot of the shows that I write for, they'll re air them, you know, each episode that I might have five or six or seven songs on, they'll air re each episode, sometimes five or six, seven times per quarter. So it can, even though it doesn't pay anywhere near what network pays, network only airs things once generally, maybe, but reality on network like Bachelor, they'll never re-air that. You'll make a little bit of money for those shows on uh, like streaming when people want to re-watch them. But really, who re-watches this, you know, Survivor from eight years ago? I don't know. Anyway, so my point is... Um, uh, yeah, I definitely per persevered, uh, Peter. It was it was a long road. Um, and when I have young people ask me, you know, I want to do what you do. I said, well, are you willing to starve for 30 years to wait for it to maybe happen? Because that's basically I moved here in 82, uh, 83, 80, January of 83. And uh, let's see, when did it start happening? I, I guess it wasn't quite 30. It was about. 2009, when the economy was tanking, is about when my career started to take off. I don't know why, but that's just it just coincided. Um, and it was a lot of it was so about 10 years ago. So I I had to wait, you know, 25 years for the career to show up. And and there was always something, you know, I would always say I'm going to quit, and then God would give me something that was just enough to keep me in the game. And that like teaching the clinics for uh, Maranatha music was one of those things where it's like, I was ready to quit. And in 97, I got asked to do this and I did it for the next three years. And it was a lot of fun and it paid really well. And it was a lot of strokes and all that. So, but yeah, so my point about the, the good news is that I got a lot of work done yesterday. And the bad news is I got a lot of work done yesterday. The, the reason it's bad news is because what it's telling me is that I need to 
definitely do this less so that I can free up my day. Really, for me, it's it's all about getting into the zone. Um, in fact, my cousin was here yesterday and um, she came in to like film me for my other cousin, to her brother uh, of working. And it was just like I was in the zone and I was like, oh, uh, sorry, I, I, I wish you could do that, but you can't, you know, because I'm working on music. And uh, um, uh, okay, thanks. I'll, I'll let me, uh, Ravish. Hey, David, I mentioned you earlier, so I don't, I don't think you saw that. Uh, I'll keep in, we'll keep in touch about the NAM show thing. I, I'd be shocked if they even let me go to the NAM show next year. I, I think it'll be very, they may make it a lot smaller, just buyers and sellers only. Uh, and that's really about 2% of the people that are at the NAMM show. It's not open to the public, but you can get a, usually get a badge if you know somebody. But that's just it. I'm just there hanging out and be seeing friends and playing gear and thinking about buying stuff. But I'm not a buyer. A buyer is someone's going to come in and buy 50 guitars and 700 pedals and 18 basses or whatever. Those are buyers. So the, the stores you go to. Um, but anyway, so yeah. So it kind of tells me that probably... What I'm going to do is, is I'll probably do, I'll keep doing this maybe Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, yeah, I understand that, Baco Cat. I've had music jobs I hated, just so you know. I've had music jobs that stole my soul. <laughs> so, uh, and sometimes uh, we, and, and, and we call, a lot of the music that I create, it's like, it's not very, it's not particularly interesting. It's just to, it's to fill space on a TV show. We call it music by the pound oftentimes. Actually, that's more often when we're doing like a whole bunch of music for a movie where you got like cues and you basically, that's why reading is so important because they'll throw up a, a chart and um, you got to read it perfect the first time. And then they go to the next chart and then the next chart and the next chart. And you may do 50 of those charts in a three hour session. And uh, basically, it's like I said, music by the pound. You're just like cranking it out. Um, Tumo. 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 Hi, Tumo. Uh, so, uh, yes, question from Ravish. How do I practice these days? Where was that question? I saw your name up there. I, was it just that? Okay, what do you do when you have... To go out somewhere and you can't practice for some days. Um, well, Ravish, to be honest, I mean, I, I, I practiced eight hours a day for 20 years. From the age of 15 to the age of 35, I was pretty religious about it, almost too religious about it. Um, and I had a routine, a lot of classical stuff, jazz stuff, reading, um, soloing scales, things like that. Um, and then I started working and I pretty much have the guitar in my hand eight hours a day anyway. Um, so when I have days off, I almost like not playing. Um, actually, I get some of my best song ideas when I don't have the guitar in my hand. Okay. So when I'm talking about pop music songs, um, uh, I conceptually, I like to think about the guitar and those are the times where I come up with ideas that, See, I, I'm writing all day long. If I'm not if I'm not working for somebody, and a lot, a lot of times I'm working for different composers. Uh, um, and so when I'm not working for a composer, I'm working for myself. And so when I'm working for myself, I'm writing music that, again, will maybe pay off in 18 months or whatever. Um, I think the, like the ETA... That song... I wrote that. I wrote that two years before it got released on a record. Um, literally, almost two years exactly to the day. And um, so you don't know. Um, but so I'm writing. So when when I'm writing during the day, I'm sitting down most of the time to write for TV. And then if I come up with an idea, because I got the guitar in my hand, if I come up with an idea that I think, oh wait, this is better for one of my pop producers or the one of my artists that I work with. Then I'll stop, I'll open up another session and I'll start recording that onto that session um, and then save that and send it to one of my pop producers or pop artists or something like that. And generally the way it's broken up into camps, if it's derivative, if it sounds like something else, um, uh, I will send it to TV because they want, they love stuff that sounds like Tom Petty 
or it sounds like Zeppelin or it sounds like Delta Blues or whatever. And I don't I don't make it sound I don't do sound likes ever. Uh, but like when I had the 12 strings, it's still yeah, still drop D. Uh, when I was doing that slide stuff, you know, that's not copyrightable for you know anybody. So I can say I could do five tracks of that kind of stuff and send it to the TV production companies and they'll eat that stuff up. But if I come up with something that I feel like is like, you know. If I come up with something like that, you know. Uh, uh, was it? Then I'll, you know, I'll get that to one of my pop artists and, um, and then they'll write to it or they'll have their team write to it or something like that. So, um, uh, let's see what, so, so back, back okay, you're saying, uh, it's hard to be successful in the, in the, oh, it's very, very hard. Everybody wants to do it. It's like, oh, I, you know, I'm going to do And so when I moved to LA, I think I moved to LA. There were, there was a joke that when you graduated from Berkeley in Boston, North Texas state in in Texas, um, obviously, and and University of Miami. When you graduated and from USC School of Music, they gave you a map of Los Angeles <laughs> that came with a diploma. And I think the year I moved to LA, twenty thousand other guitar players moved here too, including Dan uh, Dan Huff, who didn't stay here, but he he moved here six weeks after after I did, and within six weeks of that, he was working with David Bowie, and I still was like playing in a garage band and teaching one guitar lesson a week and working at a record store. So it, it you know, that was, um, um, so that was, uh, uh, pepper, uh, eight hours a day. Uh, yeah. I mean, it would be broken up into maybe two, four hour chunks. I didn't have anything else to do. I mean, I was 15. Um, I would do it after school. Um, in the summer, you know, I, I averaged eight hours. There may have been eight days I went 12 hours or longer. Um, and then there may have been a few days that I went four hours. But even when I was on vacation, I would take my guitar with us when we would go somewhere and I would sit down and do my routine. You know, my family kind of knew that that was going to be part of uh, And I would change how I practiced when I was on vacation because I could only take one guitar. So I couldn't do like electric and acoustic or nylon stuff. I didn't really do acoustic stuff. Uh, but it was mostly classical and, and jazz and rock stuff. Uh, maybe some country later on. I started working on some country, but really not so much. But yeah, I would break it up. Um, and, you know, when we were first married, my wife was the breadwinner. And then, uh, you know, I had maybe two or three hours of students a day. And then if I had a session or a gig or whatever, sometimes that would take away from uh, the eight hours. But I figured if I had a guitar in my hand, then it would be kind of the same. Now, like I said, I have a guitar in my hand all the time. So... Oh man, so Vito, you don't have a guitar in the next week. Oh, and Vito, I saw that you reached out. Jack told me you reached out. He goes, Are you talking about me? I'm like, <laughs> Are you talking about me on the. Yeah, and I, I said, Somebody reached out to me. I said, Was it a Vito? And he said, Yeah. I go, Okay. Uh, so don't expect a quick reply because I, I don't get a. Re if I text Jack and I pay his phone bill, if I don't, I don't usually get a reply from him at all if, if, if I do at all. Um, so what was your question, Vito? Sorry, we're kind of not talking too much about strumming here. Um, I want to do that hip hop strum, but I, it, that's a hard thing to teach over the internet. Um, uh, Thomas. <laughs> um, I don't see your question, Vito. Is it is it above your saying... Uh, Oh, how about maybe changing the time? Maybe uh, 11 a.m. is productive. Um, I, I, I could, it would help you maybe if I went earlier. I could do that, but I, I find that um, I'm just, regardless of when I did it, I mean, maybe if I did it at six at night, but then that would be like eight, 9 p.m. at, you know, and then it would be dinner time. So I, I'm finding that, like, you know, that I've rearranged my schedule to do this. So, um, but I can see doing it. You know, I could probably continue doing this for a while, you know, another month or so if I did it three days a week, uh, Monday, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And like I said, I probably won't 
when it all said and done, I want to probably continue to do this weekly. My goal is to actually start producing YouTube videos too, but I haven't done any of those in a while. Um, uh, th those really do help with if I if I hit one out of the park on the YouTube videos and really hit on something that people want to learn about, um, uh, then um, those videos can generate a lot of revenue. So, uh, but I haven't done a video since I started doing this. I haven't put up a new video. I think maybe one new video since then. Uh, and so, I, I you know and we we also talk. I also talked about doing a beginner uh, or a a series that's basically one, you know, lesson number one, lesson number two, lesson number three for very beginners. Um, and, uh, and those, you know, would be maybe I would try to keep them to under 10 minutes and, you know, here work on this for a week and then every week release a new one. Um, and then that could be a program. Uh, I've had a lot of people ask me, you know, do you have a program? So funny. Siri thought I said, hey, Siri. What did I say that sounded like, hey, Siri? Oh, now it's going to do it again. Um, why not do video lessons and do two-day live review of those videos? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, the, the nice thing about doing a, a legitimate video is that it's up there permanently and the, the live stream these are up there too but i mean these go on for two hours and where's the lesson god bless kimberly for saying the lesson but i don't know when she would say i've already been talking for 50 minutes and i haven't really gotten to anything that i would call a lesson except that i'm just telling giving you all the secrets that i have you know about the business but uh um but uh um as far as doing video lessons i really don't i can, I, I make more money uh, working for composers and I just, people can't, couldn't afford to pay me what I need to make to do video lessons. I do have a, I have one student, um, and I'm doing a video lesson with him tomorrow morning, but, uh, uh, the money's not an issue for them. So, <laughs> so I kind of, and I've been teaching him for a while and, uh, kind of a friend, you know, family became a friend. So, um, Yeah, I mean, but, you know, I charge, yeah, I mean, I, I didn't want to even say what I charge, so you're getting a good deal right now. <laughs> uh, let me just put it that way. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say I want to do video lessons. So, because, again, I stopped teaching. The reason I stopped teaching was because um, I wanted to concentrate on um, things that would pay forever. Um, so I'm still making money on things I did 10 years ago, whereas with a lesson, I get paid and then that, that's it. Um, and um, so, yeah. Yeah. And that's kind of why I do it. Yeah. This is all free right now. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah, I know you love me. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, Well, and it's uh, a veto. It's not my new, it's not a new job. It's just, I stopped. I mean, uh, so like I said, I stopped teaching because one of the things that was happening was I was in my studio working and then I'd be in the zone. And it's kind of like my cousin, you know, like I said, she came, she came in my office while I was writing and it kind of threw me off. And not only did it throw me off for that moment, but for the next 10 or 15 minutes, I was like uh, trying to get back in that zone. It's like writing a novel or a screenplay. You don't want anybody looking over your shoulder, right? So what would happen? I'd be working in my studio and I'd be getting in a zone. I'd be getting an idea down or working something. I'm maybe playing keyboards because it's not my forte. So I'm working on this keyboard riff or something, trying to get it down. And then a knock on the door and it'd be a student. I'm like, oh, shoot, that's right. I got a lesson today. Um, and so it became kind of a chore. Um, and then I would have a student say at three o'clock in the afternoon scheduled, it'd be at 2.30 and I'm like, uh, I'm not going to sit down and start writing because the students could show up in a half hour and then they wouldn't show up. And then it'd be like, oh, really? Okay. Now let me get in the studio. And then it's like, Oh, it's almost dinner time. So, you know, so it's, um, yeah, you really, once you're in that zone, you really don't want, and that's why I love living in the house. Cause before even we bought the house just a year ago, I was managing a building. 
So I could be in the zone and then I get someone knocking on my door saying my toilet's clogged. <laughs> so that's worse than a student. Cause I, you know, I don't get paid any extra for <laughs> clogging someone's toilet. So, um, so I feel like I'm practically on vacation now that I'm doing, uh, working in a house and I have nobody, it's really quiet here. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's, that was part of the reason I stopped teaching. And the other reason was, and the reason I started doing YouTube lessons was because YouTube does have backend. So I've made a lot of money, you know, I'm not even sure how much, but you know, thousands of dollars on my video. That's got 2 million plus views. Just so you know, I mean, it's a legitimate pursuit. Um, now I hasten, I hesitate to say that because I, I have a friend, she makes, she was making 20,000 a month of her YouTube channel. Um, and there are people who make a lot more than that. And, um, I said, I, I told you, I said, well, make sure you have other sources of income because when people find out that you're making that kind of money, then more and more people are going to do it. It's going to water down. And it's sure enough, you know, there's a million people doing what I do on now, I do it partially out of just sh getting the stuff out of my head uh, so that you can benefit from this knowledge rather than when I died and it's all gone. So now it's all up there so people can can have it for free. Um, and that's primarily why I did it. The, the revenue wasn't any of the reason I did it. I used to joke, you know, if, if I could, you know, I was making three dollars a day or something. I said, hey, well, no, if I could get to three dollars a day, it would pay for my coffee. Um, I remember joking about that. Well, <laughs> you know, it's it's. It's not too too far fetched to think that I could get YouTube to pay for my mortgage at this point. So, um, you know, I could see that that's as close as you know. At when I was making seven cents a day, I was like, yeah, I'm never going to pay for the coffee. But then I got to three dollars a day, and I was like, whoa, wait a minute. So yeah, it's definitely. Um, hey, hooks on board. Uh, I don't know what gnosis is, but uh, okay. Um, so art, uh, let's see. I would suggest a jam strap track, art is saying. Um, I would suggest a jam track if a strumming lesson, like in these videos, but just one strum pattern per jam track and it would be only top lane. And, yeah, it's not a bad idea. Um, uh, um, and maybe that would be an accompaniment to the lessons if I were to do like this progressive lesson system that everybody could go through that could generate a lot of revenue. Um, but again, I will not use existing songs. So you won't hear, I mean, I would love to go. That would be like one of the first lessons I would teach, you know, someone, because I love that because it has uses all four fingers and it's on the bottom string. And I would use it to teach how to read tab and music. And, um, that would be your first, like part of your first lesson. And, um, but there's, you know, I would have copyright issues. I would, I would have takedown notices or I wouldn't be able to monetize. And kind of the point of, of doing the videos is to be able to, is for them to continue generating revenue over, over the years. So, uh, but the strumming thing isn't a bad idea. Or, I don't know. Has, have any of you ever done the jam along the, the uh, intro to improvisation tracks? I'm going to scratch my head. I think I've got fleas. My hair is getting so ratty. Um, you know what? I'm going to go knock on the back door of my barber and see if they're, they're there. Because I've noticed so many stores. I don't know if you've noticed this because I live in L.A., remember. In L.A., we're still on serious lockdown. They're like, you can't go outside. Don't go outside. You, can't, you can only walk on the wet sand at the beach. Well, how do you get to the wet sand? <laughs> I don't understand that. But uh, it's like I've noticed so many of the businesses, <laughs> they've – block out their windows in the front you know so for all you know they actually are doing haircuts in there and nails and all that stuff but you just you have to go in the back door so um uh but yeah so the oh that's true that's right art you're right you're the one that pointed out you could play them slower that's a great idea um can you custom speed or is it just a pre it's presets right there's like one faster and three slower or something like that. I mean, I could easily pull up YouTube right now. Yeah. Um, that's a great idea. But I did a series. Uh, I think I did nine videos on intro to improvisation where I did pentatonic number one. And then I had jam track. And you played, you know. And I did. But what I didn't do was scales up and down. 
I did, um, you know, melodic ideas. And then I left enough gap, hopefully, for you to do the same lick. Um, that, yeah, so something like that would be kind of cool. Um, yeah, I th the re P uh, Peter, I started doing that. Uh, in fact, it's funny because I started doing it because I did have a student named Peter uh, last year. And you're like, well, I thought you didn't teach. Well, again, see, <laughs> he's an artist. Um, and uh, his record is just now coming out, and uh, the record label was paying the bills. So I could charge 200 an hour, and it's getting paid. Even if he didn't show up, I still charge. Um, and that happened more than almost more than it did. So you, you see what you know, I'm up against, you know. And even then, getting you know 200 an hour for a guitar lesson um, uh, wasn't. Um, was was disruptive to my day because when they're paying that kind of money, they and, and it's an artist and they've got seven things they're doing in their day and you're just one of them um, that you kind of have to bend to their time uh, constraints. So it might be very likely right in the middle of my day. So it kind of would jack up my day and I'd be like, oh, shit, can I, I can't really sit down to start working on something because it's going to be here in a minute. And then, of course, you'd be a half hour late. So um, but anyway, it was a kid named Peter and um, maybe when the record's out, we talked a lot about music theory too and uh he wanted he could play keys but he wanted to be able to do some of the stuff on keys that he did on guitar so we were transferring a lot of the stuff he did on keys to guitar and but one of the things he wanted to learn how to solo and that's when i kind of came up with that i said well here i, I had a jam track i played it i said just imitate me here's the scale we're going to use and he'd memorize it and i said okay now do, do this um so i did i do a playlist for that is that are those in their own playlist uh peter or do you know because I, I, I think they're really cool. I mean, a couple of them di maybe didn't work as well. Um, lunchtime. Go get lunch, David. Um, let's see. I can't remember if I put them in their own playlist. They may just be in the basics. Uh, let's see. Intro. Intro to improvisation. Let's just take a look at this basics and that's it okay so it's just in the basics so unfortunately the basics has like you should probably create a new playlist called intro to improvisation so that you can easily get all those and i'll just put them all in there does that make sense i got 93 videos and basics because i'm putting all these live streams in there too so you really this is not the i'm it's not the best way to do this i've, I've got two playlists um I've got a live stream playlist that all of these are in, but I'm also putting them in another playlist if they have something to do with like cage method or strumming or whatever. So here's the playlist, the basics playlist. And in there you'll see, I think all nine videos of that. And it's a jam, and, and then there's also link jam tracks. You can, you can open the jam track. And the great thing about jam track is, you know, those generate revenue too. So if you listen to the jam track, you can down, you know, if you use a, a stealer to whatever to E and E, what do, what did I what do I mean by E and E? Oh, you, is that for me? Uh, what do you mean by E and E? I'm not sure. What did I did I say something <laughs> that sounded like E and E? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna block somebody right now because I don't think. Uh, sorry. Um, so, oh, chord E, chord E. I don't know. Um, but I'll talk and play the. You know, it's that really, really imitating um, uh, drummers. 
Oh, oh, uh, bypassing the the copyright issues. Um, oh, someone said something about eating. Oh, I missed that. Sorry, I'm a little slow. Oh, Aiden, did you say something about E and E? And uh, I missed it. Sorry. Um, no, the copyright thing is no. It's just more. Um, if you're using copyrighted material on your live stream, you can't monetize it or you have to share the royalties. I think uh, Rick Beato talks about that a lot. He do, he makes most of his money actually from selling books, even though he has one, one and a half million subscribers. Um, so I, yeah, what I would do is I would make up an exercise that would be kind of like that. In fact, one of the first things I might teach my first is that and maybe not go up the neck, just and even with downstrokes. Um, uh, um, and then, um, oh, and then for copyright issues that people say, oh, well, it's fair use. It's not. Fair use, I mean, there's people that will argue this, but fair use, in my opinion, and I'm going to be arguing on behalf of copyright holders, largely. Fair use is classroom, 100%. If you're teaching music and you use the Beatles as an example, you don't need to pay the Beatles a royalty. However, if you're teaching it on YouTube, you're technically broadcasting. Um, and on broadcast, you have to give credit. Not only do you have to give credit, you almost have to have permission. Um, it just depends. Um, if you're playing the song, you don't have to give, get permission, but you have to give royalties. If you're if you're if you're playing the song, I mean, sorry. If you're actually performing the song, um, but if you if you're hitting play on a, a CD player or something like that in a classroom, I mean, online or just playing a song, then you, you have to you know if you're putting it in your movie or something, you got to get permission. <laughs> so it's broadcasting. Um, I could use the E and E. I don't know what the E and E is, so. Uh, but again, I'm, I'm not going to take chances. Uh, oh, sorry. E, e and E with the original strumming Tom between measures. Oh, oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> you guys are all confused. Uh, that's funny. It's the only thing you play on piano. Oh, you, yeah. The blues jam track. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so the, in the jam tracks are there so you can continue to work on the improvisation stuff. So uh, the. E, uh, sorry, the E and E with the strumming Tom did between measures. Uh, yeah, it's so funny how it just, I'm not understanding, but um, uh, but the groove on the, the hip hop groove, again, is that it's, um, let me write it out so you can see it on paper. And what I what I do is I generally, I'm starting with uh, two bass hits. Um, so I'm gonna write, uh, Two, two eighth notes to start with, like that. Boom, boom, down, down. So it's down, 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 up, up, down, down, and then maybe a down up to, to get you into the next chord. Um, and so what this is, is one and two, E and a, uh, three, E and four, and then maybe an end, uh, oops, end, uh, to come out of it. Okay. So get your screenshot ready. So those two eighth notes are the root. Oh yeah. E and E sus. Uh, and during the lessons, playing with while you're teaching us was awesome. <laughs> yeah, you should have a guitar in your hand anyway, man. So <clears throat> um, that pattern again is. So 
slow motion, if art we were to slow it in half. My hand just keeps moving like this. You think the sound went off. It's really, really one of the hardest ones to get down. Um, I don't know that I ever worked on it. You know what I mean? I mean, by the time I came up with that, I already knew how to play guitar. I could already do lots of strumming grooves, lots of patterns, things like that. So it was more one of those things where I was just... It's definitely one of those groups um, uh, that um, almost just kind of fell out of me as I was trying to imitate either another guitar player or a drummer. I can't, even, I couldn't even tell you. Um, and I could, I could program um, that drum sound. So basically, what what I would do if here's another thing I may do uh, in the future, in the future or for future. In fact, I thought about doing. I don't think there's any real point in doing lessons about writing music uh, because it's not something the majority of you would be interested in. But I, I do think I might do is like with these live streams, start talking about, um, oh, here, I, I, I can, I could scan it too and put it up on discord, but there it is again. I get without my face. Cause you don't want to look at that. And I'll try to get my fingers off of it, but that's the groove. There's a lot of information there. It's a mess. Look at that mess. But here are the downstrokes, down, 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 up, up, down, 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 up, down. Okay. There's the, those represents hitting the bottom. Those are bass notes. Like instead of strumming the full chord, just hit that like a bottom string or two. Okay. Um, and then this is the this is the rhythmic notation for the rest of it. Um, uh, but I, I I thought about doing a, you know, we could the subject could maybe be chord voicings. We could talk about that. Um and uh um, so that would be a, a good, um, yeah, a lot of Tom Petty songs have that group. You're right. That is actually a fairly common group. Um, yeah, it's a great strumming pattern, Aiden. It really is. A, I still use it. I mean, it. you, you know, if I sent that groove to a, 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 one of my artists that, you know, a lot of the artists I write with, they're 20, 21, 22 years old. So uh, if I sent that groove to them, they go, well, that's a little old school, you know. And old school isn't necessarily bad. Uh, but old school needs to be more than 20 years old. <laughs> so it doesn't really count. So, okay, I'm going to drop in a drum kit here. Uh, let's see, I got lots of drum kits to choose from. I'll go, oops, what the heck? I'll do that. Drum kit. Okay, there we go. Okay, turn this up a little bit. Okay, so boom, boom. Okay, that's what we want. That okay. So I'm gonna mute everything. I just need to create one bar because um, we're gonna loop this bar. What's the tempo? Yeah, it's a pretty good tempo. Okay, so I'm gonna put a. Uh, first off, I, I can set. Uh, I'll put eighth uh, eighth notes on the hi hat. If you can hear this hi hat, I can turn it up a little bit. Um, they always the default. Hi-hat settings, in my opinion, are always too quiet. And if I'm really going to get into this, I'll separate all the tracks up, but I won't do it with this. So two, three, four. Okay. But I may actually put... Uh, okay, so I'm going to quantize that so it's perfect. I mean, that just means it, it moves it right to the 16th note. I'm going to put that open hi-hat. I'm going to make it a little quieter. I'm going to put that open hi-hat on the 16th. Uh, so, and I'm going to put, so on the 16th before. So here's the hi-hat. 
So that kind of represents a that last and a one, two, three, four. Okay, that hi hat, the open hi hat kind of will push us forward there. Okay, now we want to kick on one and, right? Now we want a snare, and I got a couple of snare options here. I could go that one. That's a hard hit. Um, so I think I'll go with a, that one there. And then, so I'm going to put snare hit on two and four, and that sounds like this. Okay. Because this, the reason I'm writing this out is because this is what we're imitating. Okay. Now, I told you that the what the two upstrokes represent kind of you it's called ghosting when you kind of play a note very quietly i'll put it make it i'll make it real quiet hopefully you can hear it um and then that but i'm going to do it louder than a ghost that's about right maybe a little bit louder than that now the question is do i put another kick in maybe there Yeah. So now we have a groove. And that's a very common drum groove, kind of, you know, very, very robotic, very on the grid. on the end of three. So I'm going after those two ups. Sorry, I don't, I can't see what you're saying. Um, well, and the great thing of, of Baka Cat is I got those lessons are all up as so you can keep going back. Really what I've been showing you guys is st stuff that I would show a student and then you would have a week to work on. But we're doing like, we've been doing, and you'll notice I changed the name of this and said it says lesson number 63, not daily lesson. <laughs> so, because it was, it's it's untrue to call it a daily lesson anymore. Because I'm no lie, I skipped a day. So I can't legally say that. Or you could sue me <laughs> for, for, for uh, uh, truth in advertising, right? So, uh, yeah, Reed, you might be the youngest, or Avito might be younger. Uh, not a contest, <laughs> but uh, I work with a lot of young people, so. Uh, but yeah, so um, let's see. Mark, good to see you. So you can, so that pattern again. And I mean, maybe, maybe there might be, I mean, you could do a lot more ghosting. Like I've heard uh, ghosting that was like, Like, that's really loud. Um, let me pull these down quite a bit more. Um, and again, ghosting drummers, they're just kind of, they're, they're like, boom, boom. they do a big hit on two and four, and then they just kind of let the, the snare kind of bounce. A lot of times in the the up notes, the, the 16th notes, the E and the uhs. And that was... A Now what I can do is I can hit select all and then I can give it a little bit of a swing. So in other words, I'm gonna swing because it's a 16th note feel. So I'll swing it like, if I swing 16, that's a little too swingy for my taste for this vibe. That's a little bit swingier, not human, still not human swing, but 
but that's the pattern. You know, that's kind of the vibe that we're imitating. So uh, let's see. Uh, Vito, uh, sorry. Oh, what did say? Vito say? I missed something. Um, these lessons uh, will live on in infamy, <laughs> at least among the, the usual suspects. I'm amazed, though, that these lessons actually get, you know, I, I see 700 views of the la of two days ago. Uh, so that means it was, even though there's only 50 of us right now online watching this, um, uh, you know, there's, uh, there are people that watch these afterwards. So, I, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I've, you know, and I've watched Rick Beato's live streams afterwards. So, in fact, he's doing a lot of live streaming now. Oh, oh, is Vito trying to do the B7 chord? Is that what I missed? Oh, how did you just play the B chord without the bar on 19? Oh, <laughs> okay. I knew you were young, Vito, because you said you were an engineering student. Um, let's see. Uh, did I do a bar, a B chord? Well, I mean, I, there's a lot of ways to play a B chord. I mean, if you're in the key of E, you could play B7, but a B7 could be very... Very country. So B seven would be, you know. So um, I'm gonna I'm gonna put numbers down here. So if it's an X, that means don't play that string. X, um, and then two one two o oh, two, and that's uh, what uh, Reed was saying. A B seven. That's one way to play B seven. Uh, but if you want a pure B, um, the you know the bar, that one you can. And I'm basically deadening the bottom string with the tip of my first finger. Uh, that's I've got that video, that darn B chord. No, that darn F chord, the son of a B chord. <laughs> I have that video um, self-promoting, self-promoting, search uh, son of, oh, wait, no, I got to go to my channel. I'll put a link to this one so you can, you can do it um, or anybody. Uh, Boom. Um, copy link. Go to here. So here's the son of a B chord uh, lesson. And then um, oh, I'm getting blurry. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I, that's why I'm not using the OBS software because I could not get my up. The upload speed was like two. Just not good. Uh, Dennis, pretty. You don't know me, but I know you. I'm usually a later watcher. <laughs> You're one of those later watchers. Okay. Awesome, Dennis. Pete King. Hi. Hi from Germany. Watch your daily stream for a week. Just show my appreciation for you. Thank you so much, Pete, for staying up so late. Uh, hopefully, well, I'll be in London next year, hopefully. Um, probably England. I'll go travel around a little bit when I'm there. I don't know if I'll go to the to Euro or not. Um, I, I, I've been to only to airports in Germany. Um so uh, yeah, sorry about the blurriness. Uh, we should, you know, and and um, oh good, the video's good there. Okay, thanks, Bob. Um, so I'm not using the OBS software because I was having a hard time with that kind of connecting with YouTube at the appropriate speeds. I was I would have upload speeds as high as 20 megabytes per second, uh, but when I checked it right before I got online, it was two, and I'm like, oh, this is going to be bad. I'm not even going to try it, OBS. So okay, so B, so that B, the one I was just playing, is this, and this is the one everybody struggles with. OK, you're essentially making an A chord so you can um, start out by playing A chord this way instead of this way. Flamenco players actually play it this way. Check that out. OK, so I don't know if you can see what I'm doing, but I'm barring two notes with my first finger and I'm playing the C sharp with my second finger. And so they can play that E flat on top. So, ouch, <laughs> flamenco on steel strings is not fun. But most people play A like this, or they might play like an A bar, but then, you know, some people can actually bend their first finger so that they, and I can bend it a little bit, um, so they can actually get that E string open like that. I, I think I did that back in the day for a while. 
but this is what I play. This way to play it. And if you're playing it that way, you've got at least the voicing for B. Then it's a matter of getting the bar down. And you only have to get two notes with the bar, the fifth string and the first string. Okay. So that's a pure B. Now, the drag about this B chord is that again, if you're in the key of E, you got a big, beautiful E chord with three open strings. And then you got the A chord, which has two open strings. But if you go to A2, you've got three, three out of the five strings are open. So it has this beautiful big E. And then you go to this. Sounds weenie. Of course, I'm strumming softer to make it sound even weenier. <laughs> to make my point, so I'm cheating. But it just sounds. A lot of times, if I'm going to use a bar chord on acoustic, I'll do all the chord bar chords. Okay. So in other words, I might go. Because I'm going to have that bar chord sound. I might as well just sell myself out wholly to bar chord sound and on acoustic make it, you know. Because for my taste, to go back and forth between bar chords and open chords, it's just, it's like this dynamic shift. Um, now, what Erica did, right, uh, was that Sister... Uh, Sister Golden here. No, that's that's a Crosby Stills Nash and Young. Uh, uh, what's that song? <laughs> so that they break the rule. They literally playing bar chords and open chords, bouncing back and forth. But you know they're banging them out so hard it almost hard to tell. So. Um, yeah, you don't need to do. So, oh, you bar all the chords for the A when you bar. Uh, I used to use my ring finger, but now I know so you use your pinky. So I'll try that. Oh, for that, yeah, sometimes that works. I don't know, but I'm 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 usually deadening the first string when I do that. So if I do like, but you can't go. You don't have anything you can play above that. So when you use your pinky on that, um. But one thing you, you need to know is when you're barring the B chord, you really only need to get this note and this note, okay? So you don't have, your bar doesn't have to be straight. It doesn't have, you don't have to think of it like a bar, you know, like a bar, like I'm, you know, like that. It's not, you know, not this metal bar. So you can actually bend your finger and you just need the tip on that, although you do need to kind of bar, mute the bottom string. So that adds another layer of difficulty. Uh, No, Peter, no, it's not. It's not your ineptitude. It's the fact that open string, the difference between a fretted string and an open string is your finger, and an open, and your finger is going to deaden uh, any sound, which is the sound we all associate. You know, that doesn't offend anyone, but it's when I go from... That's why you could, you know, like so often you can do E like this. I mean, that's technically a B chord, but it's got an E in it, so it's a B4 chord. So it's got B, D sharp, E, and F sharp. And um, so that 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 D sharp and E kind of rub up against each other and create that tight voicing, which is easy on piano, but hard on guitar normally. But in this way, it's very easy. And then this, because of the open B string, this is an A2 chord, so it's not a pure A chord. If I want pure chords, I'm going to have to go to bar chords. Um, but the B, you know, there's other cheaters, like I would do a B power chord there and then leave the B string open. And then if you can miss the E string, but there's no third in this, but that's fine. You've got a B, a D sharp, I'm sorry, B, an F sharp, a B, and another B. Of course with no name. No, that's not worse than no name. That's the same band, though. Who said the? Anybody say the song? Uh, Sister, Sister Golden Hair. So is that what I said? It is what I said. Okay, so I said the right name. I, what, Sweet Judy Blue Eyes was the song I was thinking I was saying. <laughs> it's like these are all songs I learned as a kid, you know, and probably taught many, many times. And again, teaching a good. I'm not violating any copyright by teaching a song to a student one on one in a in a music studio um 
but that's her use. Uh, yeah, what's the pattern for? I taught it in that one lesson. Anyway, um, so, so like I said, the good news was that I got a lot of work done yesterday. And the bad news is that I got a lot of work done yesterday. So what that tells me is I need to not do this every day. Um, and I'll probably get work done today, but I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm pretty spent after this <laughs> being on all the time. You know, I'm putting on a show here. I'm entertaining. You know, that's entertainment. <laughs> I feel like I've been dancing and singing for two hours when I'm done with this. So uh, it makes it hard to kind of justify going and, and sitting down and writing or my head is just not, I can't, it's hard to get there. Uh, so yeah, the, and E is one of those keys where it's like, yeah, the one chord sounds so good. D is one of those keys where the one chord sounds so weeny, right? The four chord sounds great, the five chord sounds great. Especially when you're trying to strum and miss the bottom two strings. So, oh, open it up. Oh, thanks, Art. What are you doing? Yeah, I have a special right now, fourteen ninety nine. Why, Art? Why fourteen ninety nine? Why not fifteen? I don't understand. I like D more than C. Oh yeah, you know D is fun. Well, here's the thing: when I'm when I'm capoing, I'm either gonna capo and play using D shapes or shapes in the key of G. C is no fun because you got that F chord. Somebody was telling me that this is an F open chord. Well, I, I wouldn't call it an open chord because it's an open string. Uh, but you could say it's an open position. But... Well, it's, Avito, it's not the first donation ever. I don't even think it's Art's first donation ever. I, I can't remember. Oh, isn't that funny? The app defaults to X99. <laughs> That's funny. It's so weird. I still do need to do like uh, the, we could do a cup that has, uh, there will be no quiz at the end of, of the week. I, I need to know, should I put my name on that? Or is just like, no, I don't need to put my name on it. Just put, there will be no quiz on this at the end of the week, or there will be no quiz on this. And that's it. It could be in quotes. I could put it on quotes or I could just sell it like that, but I need to have my name as it, if it's my quote. Um, and the other thing is we could put the Tom command sips on a coffee cup. That would be kind of fun, but it'd be pretty small lettering. I was, I was actually using the tea, uh, the Teespring website to kind of design a coffee cup to see what it would look like, you know, and I just like black on white. I just think that that works great. Or you could do white on black. Well, I think you can actually choose the colors, which is the cool part. Um, but I may, I may do that so that there'll be like one item up there that you can buy. I could do a t-shirt that says the same thing. That would be really weird to walk around with a t-shirt though. that says there won't be a quiz on this. <laughs> what are you trying to say to people? You know, people are like, well, what do you mean? <laughs> It'd be really funny. Uh, yippee, I'm back and you're still going. Yes, Kathy. Although the lady that was like mad at me for not doing, I, I haven't seen her on here yet. For like, are you going to talk about strumming? <laughs> it's like, you don't know me, do you? <laughs> you guys are all like, oh, he did he, like an hour ago. <laughs> you guys are all jumping in. I got a thumbs down on that video. I, I even told her, I said, like, yeah, just give me a thumbs down. I, I, I don't disagree with that at all. <laughs> you came in here and it says strumming and grooving lesson. And then, and then like I'm talking about <laughs> coffee mugs. <laughs> not, it's not but yeah, the groove that we're talking about today, Kathy, and that literally probably 4% of the video is about the groove. This is what I'm imitating, this feel, which you hear all the time in music, even today, even new music. Squirrel University, exactly. I know, uh, Bonnie's, Bonnie's Squirrel Diamond. Uh, uh,
pretty slow it down. That's super, super, super. Oops, sorry. Oh, here it is. Okay. I could slow that down pretty easily. Let's see. I'm at 85. Let me go down to 60. Because it's a 16th note pattern, the eighth notes are going to be 120 and the 16th notes are going to be 240. So even, even at 60, that's pretty slow. But here's that pattern. Okay. Touching my face, my face itches. Almost out of coffee. That's when this ends. This ends when I'm out of coffee. So I chug the last bit, sign off. Yeah, Bruno Mars. Is that Bruno Mars? I say all the time what what is the thing I, there is something I say all the time um, what is a single cut right below my SG oh uh, that is a uh, like a I don't know an $80 Epiphone Les Paul um, it's, what is that a cut, what is it I forget that. It's a standard, I think it says. Special. So it's like, it's got, it's got um, soap bars in it. I paid 80 bucks for this. My daughter did the artwork. Very Beatles kind of vibe. You know, she really went for that Beatles kind of uh, look of the, kind of like, a, um, what was it, Revolver? Uh, but I have this tuned high strung. can't really hear it but i have a tune high strum uh it's really fun though and she even wrote i love you in there uh but i love this and that's why i hang it up because it's an art piece of art and then also i hang it up because sometimes i just forget that i have a high strung electric and sometimes you like me play it. it sounds really cool like through a lot of effects and everything it's a great little noise maker I mean, I actually, I, the, the sad thing is the guitar actually sounded pretty good uh, before I high, put high string. And now I want to like, I need to get another one of those. The thing is, I have a Paul Reed Smith uh, McCarty model that has soap bars. And it's great. Um, I love it. But I, you know, I, I never play that thing. Hardly ever. Because uh, it's just too ding dang noisy. So, hey, Oliver. Nice to see you. Olivier. Olivier, I think. Where are you from? Hey, Broken Thumbs is back. See, I, just, I knew you'd, <laughs> I knew you'd be. You left with an acoustic, came back with an electric. The only thing consistent is the sip. Yep. Yeah, I, say, I always say there will be a, no quiz on this. There's something else I would say a lot, too. Um, I don't know. I need to make a note of some of my more quotable moments. Um, yeah, Olivia, you'll be um, another one. Okay, well, there's all, uh, you're not alone. Um, let's see, is there anybody here on, let's see, where's uh, Bob? Uh, I'm pretty popular in the Netherlands, I am, and I was just there. I went to a couple guitar stores in the, in uh, in uh, Amsterdam uh, back up. Uh, uh, about a year and a half ago, I was in. Uh, how long? How long have I played guitar? I've been playing guitar for the last couple hours now. Um, <laughs> oh, let me see if I can find the C. Uh, I've been playing for. It'll be fifty years in July. Fifty years. That's why I'm so gray. It's not because I'm old, but because I play guitar for a living. That's why I'm gray. Uh, I'm gonna put, put some, I'm gonna find a video. Let's see. Uh, the neighbors on garage. 
ABC Garage, let's see, Garage Band. Garage. Okay, let's see if I find the scene. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna, what was, uh, I found this scene the other day, or maybe I had it, ABC. So I, I did a, some coaching. Hmm. I thought for sure that that scene might be on. I'm going to have to look it up and see maybe. But I did this scene for, uh, I did some coaching for this TV show called The Neighbors. The two main ma male characters um, in this, this episode were playing guitar. And one the premise is uh, this uh, regular average American family moves into this neighborhood in, I don't think it's in California, supposedly. And all the, all the people in the neighborhood are space aliens, but they all look like humans. And the show was called the neighbors. And so I don't know if it was some kind of political, uh, commentary, but, uh, <laughs> Oh, you got 11 guitars. Nice. Uh, Oh, you've been playing for five years. Awesome. Um, so, uh, and anyway, he, 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 he's never played guitar before the alien guy, but he, he shows up at the, the normal human guy's garage band practice. And he says, Oh, what is that thing? I've seen that somewhere. And he picks up and he kind of, and he's like, Oh, you can't play. And then next thing you know, he's playing EAD or whatever. And the next thing you know, he's like doing some flashier stuff. And then he does like Van Halen thing, right? Like some or something. And that's they cut to my hands. Those are my hands on the guitar. Uh, and I coached him to be able to do look like he could play all those other things because it was all actually just being played. Actually, yeah, it was in his ears um, and not. Uh, and so uh, they pre-recorded all that stuff. So I had to learn the pre-records, show it to them. And then uh, so it was a pretty funny scene. I'm trying to find it. Uh, uh, but <laughs> you have 11 guitars, but I'm married, which means you really have 11 guitars. But then you have. Uh, 12. Oh, okay. I'm oh, sorry. Hold on a second. <laughs> my plumber is here. I mean, my. My pool guy is here and he's going to repair tile. So you can take a sip because I left, uh, left the room. So, um, Yes, counting the strums. Yep, Kathy, definitely understand that. Um, and yeah, and Kathy, was it you that was saying, well, someone, no, I think it was Bonnie that said that she played piano early on. Nice. Well, you know, and guitars make great wall hangers too. They look great on the wall. I mean, this is my office. And in my house, the rest of the house, we don't have any guitars hanging up. I don't want any reminders. I See, I the very rule that I give people about... Um, uh, playing, um, playing guitar, uh, you know, having a guitar out, uh, is something that I don't actually do because, um, I play all day, so I don't need to do that. So I come into my office, I think office thoughts. Once I leave my office, I don't want to be, have guitars around. So anyway, uh, can I play Jimi Hendrix? Um, I can play like Jimi Hendrix. I don't know. Do I, do I have a sound up? As far as playing specific Jimi Hendrix songs, it's, I mean, there were probably times when I had those down, but I could, you know, I'd rather play ish than. So, 
I'll mess around on Jimi Hendrix, but you, I got to be careful not to quote him too much or I get a takedown notice. So, uh, yeah, this guitar is, I kind of play every style. I'm a, a master of none. <laughs> uh, and I just leave it at that. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I got Yep, I've got to log off too. So um, so I will see you. I will take tomorrow off. Um, I actually have some stuff I got to do tomorrow anyway, so it works out. But I will see you on Friday. Um, and um, I think I'll still work on some grooves. I think we'll still work on the grooves. Maybe I'll spend more time on this. I'll, uh, let, me, um, let, me, let me tear this off. Hopefully I can tear it off without destroying it. Voila. And I'll scan this and put it up on Discord, okay? Um, in fact... I didn't do this stuff. I'll I'll scan these and put them up in Discord too, okay? But PDFs are okay, right? Can I do B PDFs on Discord? And Kathy has been gone, but that's actually good. I'm glad that she's uh, getting a break. So I appreciate you, Bruce, uh, for moderating. Um, appreciate it. Stay safe. Oh, and Diane, uh, yeah, did I – was there a story I was going to – oh, the story was, yeah, I told you you wouldn't like it. <laughs> so I'll see you on Friday. Aiden, good to meet you. Um, Ireland, uh, this, you, I, I would have guessed you were from Ireland with a name like Aiden Donnelly. You're probably really from like San Francisco and you're just messing with us all. But no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you guys. I'll see you guys in a couple days. I may log on tomorrow. One thing I may do tomorrow is if I'm writing, I may log on with my laptop, put it over here and you can see me work. Okay. So that may be a little, you know, like I'll, I'll say, I'll call it take my subscribers to work day. Okay. That's what it'll be called. So if you see, if you get a notification, it'll be for that. And I don't know what time that'll happen. Uh, I do have a, I do have an Instagram. If you just go to the Straley, um, but I don't put up guitar stuff. It's mostly just, just weird stuff, you know, like my kids or me or whatever. So, okay. Oh, Clem didn't see you there. Thanks a lot. Take care. God bless you guys. And uh, you can keep chatting for a little bit. And then the Discord site. Oh, sorry. Let me grab the Discord site. Uh, uh, here's the Discord link. So if you're new and you want to continue this discussion with everybody, there they are. I won't necessarily be there, but um, uh, there's the link. Okay. God bless you guys. I'll talk to you soon.